Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user BoxfishFan. My 28 female husband, 37 male of 2 years, blew up at me when I asked if I could be a working stay at home mom and accused me of being a horrible step parent to his daughter, 8 female. I'm crushed, is he right? Posting from a throwaway just in case my husband or any of my family and friends read this. I'm going to change a few details because I'm paranoid, but the story is the same. I'm a saleswoman and I do very well for myself. My husband and I have been married for two years now and together for five. This is my first marriage and my husband's second. He has an eight-year-old daughter from his previous relationship and has always had full custody of her. Our dating life was tricky with him being a full-time single dad and having to work long hours, but we made it work. I met his daughter when she was four after we had been dating for a year. I liked her very much and have always done my best to be the best stepmom ever. She calls me mom and I have done all the mom things for her. I've helped her get dressed and ready for school, done her hair, cooked her meals, helped with homework and soccer practice, taken her for ice cream dates, tucked her into bed, read her stories, etc. I'm not perfect and I've made mistakes, but overall we've been a very happy family. When my husband and I got engaged, he asked if I would like to be a stay-at-home mom for Lizzie and any future children we had. At the time, I politely declined. I was doing well in my career, loved going to work and the thought of being home all day with a kid and doing nothing but housework and typical stay-at-home mom things didn't really tickle my fancy. My then fiancé was gracious and we both assumed that was how it would be for any future children we had. Fast forward to now and I am now 6 months pregnant with our son. I am on cloud 9. I was, am, always in a permanent state of bliss and something in me changed. I started thinking about being a stay at home mom and suddenly it didn't seem so bad. I am in love with my son and want to spend as much time with him as I can. I know it's not all roses and champagne, there is actually a lot of poop, drool, screaming and exhaustion involved, but I can't really stand the thought of having two weeks of maternity leave and then handing my son to a stranger in daycare. I've been thinking about this for months because I wanted to make sure this was something I really wanted and not wishful thinking. I weighed the pros and cons and spoke to my supervisor. I'm at the point in my career where I could work from home full time and stay with my son and pick my stepdaughter up from school. I certainly wouldn't mind watching her and doing more things with her too. The more I think about it, the more I want to try this. So after I put little Lizzie to bed tonight, I asked my husband if we could talk and excitedly broached my idea. I was very unprepared for his reaction. My husband is furious. He yelled at me that we had agreed I wouldn't be a stay at home mom before we got married and it was BS I was changing my mind now. He said I was a rotten stepmother and I clearly loved our son more than Lizzie and it was disgusting the obvious favoritism I was showing him. He also said I shouldn't be allowed to stay at home with our son if his daughter didn't get to experience it with me. For the record, Lizzie is very excited about her little brother and can't wait for him to be born. She's never expressed any kind of anxiety, sadness or jealousy towards him or me. I was shocked and stunned. My husband is on the couch, his choice, and I'm here crying in our room. I am so very hurt by what my husband said. I know I'm not perfect, but I have really done the best for Lizzie that I could. I never thought I'd change my mind about being a stay at home mom when I got pregnant, but now I really truly want to do this. And I wouldn't have to quit my job either, which is a double bonus. I am very hurt by what my husband said and frankly a little angry at his accusation. I do not love the baby more than Lizzie. I do love Lizzie and while I admit I feel a deeper connection to this baby, I feel that is due to the fact that I'm going through the experience of pregnancy and it's really hitting home for me that this baby is half me. But that doesn't mean I love Lizzie any less, it's just different. Is that really so wrong? Am I really a bad stepmom? I didn't plan on changing my mind and again I still plan to keep my job and I don't mind taking extra care of Lizzie in addition to the baby. In fact, I think it might be a chance for us to grow closer and bond over the baby. I don't know what to say to my husband. 
I tried telling him all the things I've said here, including spending more time and growing closer to Lizzie, but all he did was yell louder and say more awful things about my parenting. I'm pretty crushed and honestly growing angrier by the minute. I feel that I'm a good stepmom to Lizzie and she seems to think so too. The only one who seems to have a problem is my husband. Okay OP, first of all in my opinion, your husband's reaction is way over the top. In my opinion, having a disagreement, an argument or even a fight with your spouse doesn't mean screaming and yelling is an okay thing. And yes, I understand that in moments of hard emotion you can get carried away, but still, screaming at your spouse, that's not a good thing. Also, the point that he tried to make about you not being allowed to stay at home with your son if his daughter didn't get the same experience with you is kind of stupid because you weren't ever pregnant with Lizzie nor gave birth to her. And it wouldn't even hold water if two years ago you had decided to become a stay-at-home mom. And finally, you are entitled to change your mind. And in this case, it's not just a whim. It's something that you've been thinking about for months and you've looked at every different angle and you still want to do it. Now, I'm not sure if sitting down with your husband to talk this over again is going to change anything. So maybe this is a moment where a couples counselor can help you out. And what do you guys think? What would you do if you were in OP's shoes? Let me know in the comments section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Deleted says, by the time your son is four, you might well want to work in an office. A newborn is very different from a preschooler and parenting two kids is very different from parenting one kid. You are also a different person than you were four years ago. The situation is different and you're allowed to change your mind. You should ask your husband if he's really so angry at you for not being able to see into the future that he's willing to punish you, your son and your daughter for it. If he is, I think marriage counseling would help. If I was in your position, I would need to work really, really hard at not growing to resent your daughter. It's not her fault, but every time I would hand off my two-week-old baby to a stranger, my first reaction would be, this is my punishment for not taking care of my stepdaughter when she was a newborn. I'm being punished for my inability to time travel. Honestly, I think the resentment would kill the marriage eventually. I hope your husband realizes this eventually. Tough Gusty says, I don't even know where to start with this. Of course you're not a bad stepmom. That assertion is beyond ridiculous. There's a perfectly legitimate and obvious reason why you would want to be a stay-at-home mom with two kids around, but not a stay-at-home mom with one kid around. It's twice as much work, if not more, to raise two kids. And it's not like you're quitting your job, so you're really going to be a work-from-home mom anyway. Is he seriously so irrational that he wants to deprive both of your children of the opportunity to have a parent at home? As well as both of your paychecks of the cash required to send the younger one to daycare in the future. Just because you haven't been a stay-at-home mom all along? That's downright vindictive towards you, your son and his own daughter. Give him a couple of hours to cool off if he needs it, but he really needs to come to you begging for an apology in my opinion. This kind of reaction to your proposal is inexcusable and worrisome. Throwaway Tink2 says, I'm going to get downvoted to heck for this, but I kinda agree with OP's husband, to an extent. When they got married, he wanted her to be a stay-at-home mom to Lizzie, and she could have been a working stay-at-home mom then too. She refused. Now she is having a bio baby and OP wants to do what her husband asked her to do for his first child for her bio child. You wouldn't do it for Lizzie, but you'll do it for your baby. What the F? Now, I'm not saying the attitude is right, but I do get it as a gut reaction response. For the sake of your marriage, your pregnancy and this new baby, I urge you to get a therapist to mediate and get your husband to untwist his way of thinking. Best of luck to you all. Okay, well I think the community had some pretty good points to raise. My only rebuttal would be to the last commenter when they said that OP could have been a working stay-at-home mom back then. I don't think that's the case because OP stated in her post that now she has the possibility or the seniority to actually be able to do that. In any case, OP has given us two updates, so let's move on to the first one to see what happened next. Thank you all for the kind and supportive messages on the last post. It was really helpful, as well as some of the possible suggestions as to why my husband suddenly blew up at me. Now, to address some of the questions that were asked in the last post. At the time my husband asked me to be a stay-at-home mom, we were not married, nor was I at a place in my career where I could have worked from home. 
I would have had to quit my job, which I did not want to do, to be a parent to a child that wasn't mine, to a man I wasn't married to, but would have full financial dependence on. So that was a huge no-go for me. But even after we were married, it took a while to still get to a place where I wouldn't have to quit my job to be a stay-at-home parent. To those who were saying I couldn't expect to work full-time from home and take care of an infant and grammar school girl, you're right. Maybe I worded it wrong or just didn't go into full details in my post, but while I would be working from home and I can do it without having to quit, I would be working part-time instead of full-time. My supervisor is 100% fine with this. So basically, I would have two weeks of maternity leave and then I would be working from home part-time. While I will take a cut in my pay, my company is great and is letting me keep full benefits despite part-time hours. I know my husband isn't worried about finances because even if I quit, he makes more than enough to comfortably support us. I just love working too much to completely quit, but my son is definitely a priority for me. Lindsay's mom is in the picture, but just barely. She has borderline personality disorder, drinks like a fish, and is just basically an irresponsible party animal. She says Lizzie maybe one week and a month if she isn't too hungover or stoned to make an effort. The only nice thing I can say about her is that at least she makes child support payments on time, minuscule as they are. Lizzie doesn't like her very much and has made it clear she prefers me to her mother. I can't say I blame her, poor dear. Now, on to the update. So, I went to bed that night very angry after my crying jag because I love Lizzie and think I have been a great mom to her. The next couple of days were very quiet. I was distant but polite to my husband and still warm and cuddly with Lizzie. I didn't really want anything to do with him. My husband started picking on everything I did for Lizzie and around the house. Started saying more things like, Why are you bothering? That's not how this should be done. And, I'll bet that makes you feel great. I had had enough. After I put Lizzie to bed, I told my husband I was sick of his nasty attitude and that he was setting a toxic environment for his daughter and that if he had anything to say, he should say it. He started to yell and scream again, but I put my foot down this time. I said, I want to work through whatever problems we have and get this issue resolved because I love you and care about you, but I will not take toxic abusive behavior. I will not talk to you until you are ready to be respectful and kind. My husband lost it even more and screamed, I'm sleeping on the couch. So I said, excuse me? I am heavily pregnant with your son and every part of me hurts. I need access to the bathroom when I wake up at night. I will be sleeping in our bed. You can either join me if you can be quiet or you can sleep out here. He seemed kind of taken aback and I just left and went to bed. I guess he slept on the couch. The next day after Lizzie went to bed, I said that I think we need to set up an appointment with a marriage counselor. My husband said I'm the only one with the problem so he won't go. I asked him to please tell me what was bothering him then so we can work through it. In a nutshell, he is pissed I didn't want to quit my job and be a stay-at-home mom for Lizzie, but I do for our son and so, therefore, I love our son more and that makes me a terrible person. I explained like I had before that I didn't want to quit my job and be dependent on a man I wasn't married to. He got very defensive and said it's clear I've never trusted him then and that makes me a bad wife and mother. I asked why didn't he quit his job then and be a stay-at-home dad. He blustered a bit, then responded he makes more, true, and children need a mom during the early years more than a dad. He also said that since Lizzie never had the experience of a stay-at-home mom, then our son shouldn't have the favoritism of getting it either because it wasn't fair to Lizzie. I said it was ridiculous to punish me and our son for being unable to travel back in time and to change the uterus Lizzie was conceived in. I also said infants need a lot more care than preschool kids. That opened up a whole other can of worms with my husband resenting me for not quitting work and being a full-time stay-at-home mom and that if I'm going to do something, I should do it fully engaged. What? He then went on and on about how I'm breaking our agreement for me to not be a stay-at-home parent and how that makes me unstable. I pointed out that I have a right to change my mind and I won't give my baby to a stranger to raise while fretting about him all day at the office. I said I was very willing to do more things with Lizzie. I'll take her to the zoo and museums with the baby, get involved at PTA at her school and go to her sporting events so me and her brother can watch her while she practices. 
I said this is healthy for all the children and he had a warped view of justice and fairness by depriving our children of a healthy environment because Lizzie's mom was an unfit parent. I said his guilt won't go away by taking opportunities away from our kids and that I was willing to work out whatever issues there were and to go to a counselor and speak to child psychologists and other professionals that could give him an unbiased professional opinion. Nope, he became violently angry again and said I was going back to work two weeks after the birth and that was the end of the discussion. That I had had my chance to be a stay-at-home mom and since I didn't take it for Lizzie when I could, I wasn't allowed to do it now since he wouldn't let me. Now, as much as I love my husband and our children, I will not be controlled. I will not be told where I can and can't work. I will not be told if I can or can't work. I am not a dog and I am not a slave. I will not be told to deny my own baby his mother and hand him to a stranger because his sister got a bad start in life. Purposely neglecting our own child's opportunities in the name of fairness is insane. That is being a bad parent. The fact that my husband wanted to do this to me and my son flipped a switch in me. I stood up calmly and told my husband I was leaving, that he had crossed the line and I needed space from him and that I would not subject any child of mine to this kind of abusive controlling environment. I said when things calm down we can go to marriage counseling because he clearly has deep seated issues that need to be worked out. He became hysterical and said I can't leave, that we have a family, that I can't take his son etc etc. I was just done by that point. I said that for once he will take Lizzie to school and I will leave during that time. I went to our room and started packing. He started throwing my clothes out of the suitcase and screaming at me. I was honestly pretty terrified. I had never seen my husband like this. I told him if he tries to prevent me from going or touches me in any way I would be calling the police. I also said I was calling my mother to come and get me. Maybe it was an overreaction, but I was scared senseless and I just wanted to get myself and my son away from it. He started crying really hard, just sobbing and walked away. I called my mother and said she needed to come and get me immediately, that I didn't feel safe and I needed to stay with her for a bit. I quickly packed what I needed and my mom came and got me. I've been with her for about 5 days now and I feel just numb. I can't believe how fast this all happened and how my family and marriage got turned upside down in just a few days. I wish I had never brought up being a stay at home parent. If I hadn't, this never would have happened. My husband and I were no contact for a couple of days and then he started texting and calling on day 3 saying Lizzie has been crying for me and misses me. I've ascertained that Lizzie is safe. I know my husband would never mistreat her but I spoke to her yesterday anyways and made sure she's being fed, going to school and doing her homework. She was crying and asked me when I'm coming back and I didn't know what to say to that so I said I didn't know but that I loved her very much. I told my husband to stop using Lizzie as a pawn to manipulate me into coming back because it won't work. He actually said I'm proving I'm a terrible step parent by not coming back and being there for her. I said that if I'm so terrible he shouldn't want me back then and to not speak to me again until he is ready to go to counseling and leave Lizzie out of our problems. I said if Lizzie is mentioned in any text or email I will delete it without reading the rest of it. I said any phone call where he tries to bring her up outside the context of her being safe and taken care of I will immediately hang up on. I said I do not want to talk to him right now and he should figure out what he wants because I'm ready to file for divorce if he doesn't pull it together soon. My husband started crying again but I just hung up because I was too exhausted to deal with any more that day. He's been silent since except for one text I got today saying he wants me back and misses me. I really don't know where to go from here. I'm still trying to process all of it although writing it down here helps. I just can't believe my husband did all of this and I'm wondering if he just had a psychotic break. I'm wondering what red flags I've missed all this time and why I was stupid enough to marry and have a family with this guy and how could I have been so blind. I want to divorce him but I'm not ready to head for the divorce court yet. I want some space and time to process it all and see if my husband shows signs of wanting to go to counseling or trying to repair the damage done. I want to know if this was just a one time thing or if this is who he really is. I feel terrible for Lizzie but I can't put myself or my son in jeopardy by moving back out of guilt.
I'm being selfish right now and saying that my son and I are priorities right now. I have to do what's best for my son. Okay, well that was a roller coaster of an update. So by now I guess you guys are ready to go to the final update and see how this story ends. Hi everyone, it's been about 10 weeks since the last update and I just wanted to give a brief update while I still have time. I put small whales to shame with my current size and my baby is ready to burst out of me in just a few weeks, although he technically could come any day now. So after my last post, my husband's brother and best friend went over there to figure out what the hell was going on. My boss was gracious and let me start maternity leave early, saying to take my time and figure out what I'm going to do and my job is ready for me when I come back. So they are taking good care of me. I also got a personal therapist because obvious reasons are obvious. I was a numb shell for a while and one day I just broke and started crying and crying and crying and could not stop for the life of me. I don't think I've cried that hard ever in my life. My therapist has been a great part of my support system and guiding me through my issues and supporting my decisions. So as I said, my husband's brother and friend went over there to talk to him and they told me that he told them he was pissed off I was breaking our previous agreement and that he couldn't help but feel I didn't love Lizzie or that I loved our son more and that maybe he made a mistake marrying me because now I was picking sides and being unstable and that I had left him when he told me to treat the children fairly because he didn't think our son should get a stay at home mom because Lizzie didn't. And they completely ripped into him. His best friend, Craig, asked him what the F was he on to come to such a ridiculous conclusion. He pointed out all I had ever done for Lizzie and that me being a part time working stay at home mom would benefit her too because I would be able to do more things with her and spend more time with her. And also that he was a moron and I was clearly not after his money because I could have been a stay at home mom for just her and let him be the sole financial provider, but I didn't. His brother, Daniel, was even blunter. Daniel called my husband an a-hole and douchebag and said point blank he didn't deserve me. He said my husband was being a controlling jerk and punishing me for his bitch of an ex-wife he shouldn't have married and reproduced with in the first place. Apparently, there is a lot of family anger on my husband's side for him marrying and having a kid with his ex-wife and I won't go into it. Anyways, Daniel said I was the best thing to ever happen to him, my husband, and Lizzie, and he was ruining it with his own two hands and he better man the F up and get over his ex and start treating me better and appreciating me more. And that he was being a crappy parent to Lizzie and our son by thinking that forcing me to return to work was okay because that made it fair and that I was a far better mother to Lizzie than his ex ever was and I did a damn good job of showing my love for her. I wrote that my husband started texting me in my last post and then he started blowing up my phone begging me to come back, that he couldn't function, etc. He also broke my rule and said Lizzie wasn't doing well without me, which really angered me and broke my heart because I love that little girl but it felt so manipulative. I basically told my husband if he continues to use Lizzie as a reason I should come back I would be filing for divorce because I would not be with someone who uses a child as a manipulative tool. And that I didn't want to be a replacement mom for Lizzie. I wanted to be his wife and have a family with him that included Lizzie. I said get a therapist and into couples counseling with me or he would be getting divorce papers because I will not have my son in a toxic controlling environment. My husband agreed to both, saying he couldn't live without me and he knew he needed help. Our couple's therapist was great. He touched on all the issues I wrote about and tried to get my husband to see he was being unfair and controlling and that while it was understandable he would have a lot of fear and pain from his previous marriage, it was cruel to take his issues on me because I had never wronged him and was not his ex-wife, so why was he making me pay for what she did to him? It basically boiled down to my husband being afraid of me becoming like his ex and that I would favor our son and hurt his daughter or love her anymore. The therapist touched on the issue of his kids versus my and our kids. She said my husband needed to keep in mind that it is natural to feel more connected and attached to biological children as opposed to stepchildren. She told my husband that while both Lizzie and our son were his children, this was not the case for me. And not only was that natural and expected, it was okay. 
She asked, had I not been loving and kind with Lizzie? Had I not taken care of her? Did I go out of my way and sacrifice for her as would any other parent do? My husband replied hesitantly but positively to all the questions. So she said then, there was nothing wrong with my feelings or changing my mind. As long as I continued to treat Lizzie with love, respect and kindness, that there wasn't a problem. She said there are many kinds of love and me having this special bond with the baby and wanting to stay home and nest was not only natural but it also didn't mean I had lost any maternal love for Lizzie. That it wasn't less or wrong or unfair, just different. And that one of the biggest mistakes biological parents make with the step-parent is guilting or bullying them about their feelings towards stepchildren versus biological children and insisting it has to be exactly the same. She said that while that is also a natural and protective instinct, the biological parent actually ends up being the one causing friction and tension and making both step-parent and child feel inferior and if care isn't taken, the stepchild can end up being the favored one because the biological parent tries to make up for favoritism they believe exists. This was starting to be my feeling. She wrapped up by saying parents even tend to have favorites among biological children, but that the key was to not act on that or make it obvious. And that was what I was doing and that it sounded like I had done a great job so far and that we were even ahead of the game because Lizzie was excited about the pregnancy and had a very positive and close relationship with me. My husband tried to argue saying me staying home with our son but not Lizzie was blatant favoritism. The therapist countered many of the points made in the last post. In short, she said the fact I was more than happy to spend more time with Lizzie, wanted her to be in the baby's life, wasn't being territorial or aggressive about the pregnancy and was still taking an active role in Lizzie's life were very good signs that we were, in fact, doing much better than many step families in our position. I'm sorry to say my husband tried but just couldn't accept it. We tried going on family outings more and therapy but he backed out saying he felt he was being ganged up on and that no one was on his side. He simply couldn't see why I should stay home to work with the baby. I asked point blank if he even wanted the baby and seemed shocked and said of course he did. He just wanted to make sure his daughter got what was owed to her. In the end he refused to compromise and frankly I saw it as being blatantly unfair and cruel to our son to insist he had to be put in daycare or given to a nanny or au pair. All in the name of fairness despite both his therapist and ours explaining fairness does not always mean equality. It's like he didn't want to see how me being a stay at home mom would also greatly benefit his daughter. I think my husband expected me to cave. All it did was make me lose love and affection for him, especially when he quit therapy. I warned him if he did or tried to insist on having his way, I would be filing for at the very least legal separation. I think he thought I was bluffing because when nothing changed, I went straight to the attorney's office. He was completely shocked when I had him served. I have arranged a semi-formal custody agreement. I will keep the working from home arrangement while staying with my parents. My husband is not allowed to be in the birthing room when I go into labor. He has to stay in the waiting room. He can see and hold our son but he will have to do it while I am there with someone else there. I insisted on this because I am frankly very afraid now of my husband and do not trust him at all. My husband is consumed with shock and grief. His family is furious with him and completely supports me although of course they are very upset by the whole thing. I have told all of his family they are more than welcome to come to the birth and hold the baby. In fact, I want them there so they can supervise my husband with the baby so he doesn't do something horrible. My husband texts and calls and emails me constantly saying he can't believe I'm doing this. Why can't I listen to him and understand him? Please come back and be a family again, etc. I have told him he needs to get back into therapy and that I need to be able to trust him with our son and that trust will only come when I see a change in his attitude regarding our son and my stepdaughter and that I need to feel like a wife to him and not just a mom to Lizzie. I love Lizzie, I truly do, I cry every day over losing her but I didn't marry my husband to be her mom although I knew that was part of the package deal. I did it because I loved my husband and wanted a life with him. Lizzie calls me often and I talk to her. I've seen her a few times since this fiasco. Her father is not allowed to talk about her to me because I feel he's being manipulative. 
but I don't want to cut Lizzie out cold turkey either. I love that girl, I truly do, and I've cried so many tears over her going through this. I tell Lizzie I love her very much, that none of this is her fault and that I'm doing the best I can to make things work. I tell her I still want her to be in my life and her brother's life and that she is the best bonus daughter and sister in the world. I've heard from my husband's family Lizzie is not taking our separation well and has screamed at her dad. I've been afraid Lizzie would hate me for this but in fact just the opposite has happened. Her grades are failing, she is depressed and she cries all the time and has become very disrespectful to her dad. I have begged my husband to please get that girl counseling and he has which has been helping her. The guilt I feel is overwhelming and crushing. I feel like I've single handedly destroyed my family but I know I'm making the right decision by sticking to my guns and insisting I be treated with love and respect and that my husband do the same for both of the kids. I can't fix him and if he's unwilling to get help for his issues I have no future with him. I am not willing to go for divorce yet, hence the legal separation. My husband insists he wants this to work. I said I need to see changes in his life, starting with him getting back into therapy. I want to save my marriage, but I've done all I can and if my husband doesn't do his part, there's nothing I can do except move on. I've told my husband if he has not gotten therapy by the time our son is a month old, I will be filing for divorce and that if he abuses me, hurts me or even thinks of dating other people again, I will be filing for divorce. All in all, a sad update, but one that is a type of catharsis for me, so I thought I would share. Thank you to everyone who has given me such great advice and support before. You're all wonderful. Sorry this was long and couldn't be better news. And that is it. That is all I could find from OP and her posts or any kind of information regarding this story. I used all of my tricks and I came up empty. So at this point it is wishful thinking and especially for Lizzie that OP's husband was able to go to therapy and get over whatever was haunting him and was able to recover his family. I truly hope that was the case. Now at this point I would usually read a mood booster but it's been already a really long video so I'm just gonna refer you guys to my shorts channel. Go ahead and enjoy any of the stories in there, they're all awesome. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I really did enjoy reading them to you. So if you did then don't be shy and go ahead and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe or even share this video with people that you might think will enjoy my storytelling. Also, if you have the time, go down to the video description and check out all the links I have for you, from our Discord community to my channel merch. And finally, I'd like to say thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me that you enjoy my videos. And having said all that, I'll see you guys in the next video.